Hello, welcome back to my presentation. Today, we will continue with our classes and still we are in the introduction to crop growth simulation modeling. And in this class, actually, we are going to learn the very basics of calibration and validation. As you know, what is model calibration? And as you know, the calibration and validation is part of the modeling process. So model calibration is the process of adjustment of model parameters and forcing within the margins of uncertainties. That means in model parameters and or model forcing to obtain a model representation of the process of interest that satisfies pre-agreed criteria. That means it is goodness of fit or cost function. So as in most of the models actually, they are developed um, outside India, maybe any other country. And when you want to use them in your place, so you need to you know, calibrate according to your condition. So um, when you calibrate the model and force them to adjust to your parameters, then probably the figures I have shown here. So you have to prepare such, such type of figures with the observed and traded values and find out the goodness of fit. So this is just the beginning of model calibration then forcing the model to come closer to your observed values. But in concept and in methodology of calibration and validation, you find that calibration is the iterative process of comparing the model with the real system, revising the model if necessary, comparing again until a model is accepted. That means is after accepted means it is ready for validation. And validation is a process of comparing the model and its behavior to the real system and its behavior. That means it is one of model testing. So why we need validation? Different crop cultivars are grown in different locations across the world. Hence, it is necessary to calibrate crop models to account for difference in crop phenology, growth related parameters. As you know, so the varieties that are grown in India, maybe other parts of the world. So there needs to be when you use a model that is developed and the varieties that are present in the model as crop modules. Uh, so those cultivators, they may not be you know, good for some other conditions of our agroclimate situations. In that case, what we need, you need to you know, parameterize our model. That's why for that particular cultivars, that's why we go for calibration. So it is necessary to calibrate models to account the difference in crop phenology and growth related parameters. So you may follow the two principles here, elaborate calibrations, this request field experiments. So usually in the calibration experiments, they are grown in optimum nutrient management conditions, optimum water management conditions with no disease and pest for particular crops or crop cultivars. So this requires field experiment, of course, we need because we need to develop the crop coefficients or phenological parameters, uh, phenological stages and genetic coefficients for particular variety of a crop. So when crops are grown without evident of nutrient limitations and no incidence of biotic stress, where all weather soil management data required to run the simulations are available. So this is the best suited condition for calibration experiments. But it is, may not be possible to have this type of situation everywhere. So if you don't have the first one situation, then you move to the next one for simple, only phenological calibration. That means if number one, if number one is not possible, use methodology given by Van Watt et al. 2013b, which you find in subsequent slide, to, you may go and you may read that. Uh, literature and to find out to calibrate the simulated crop phenology for each crop buffer zone. Briefly, it was proposed in that model up to optimize model coefficients related to phenology until the simulated physiological maturity matches the actual physiological maturity or date of harvest reported by the country agronomist. This phenology calibration is preferably done based on the buffer specific weather data and showing and maturity dates specified by the country agronomist. So, so these are uh, the methods of um, you know calibrating your field experiments for the model and this is the references you may read. 
the first one is estimating crop yield potential at a regional to national scale so here you find the methods of calibration given by these authors so you may read and improve your knowledge and understanding about the subject so coming back to the presentation here the guidelines to select field experiment for model parameterizations as you know for phenological parameters whenever they are available from field experiments or recorded phenological stages at experimental sites they can be used to parameterize the model coefficients related to phenology as long as the weather data from the local meteorological stations situated within the same climatic zones so for calibration purpose or for phenological parameters what you need here is the climate data so weather data from nearest weather station and solidated data and crop coefficients generated from your calibration experiments these phenological data are available what are those phenological data that showing an emergence flowering physiological nature either their dates or they are calculated in terms of growing degree days or heat unit or thermal unit or second one is growth and yield related parameters as you know experiments that can be used for model calibration should have been carried out under optimal growing conditions as i mentioned in earlier slide number one situations but experiments that are received suboptimal management practices should be avoided when calibrating growth and yield related model parameters so the very purpose of underlining is that your experiment should be of optimal means all those management practices related to nutrient and water decision phase should be optimized because as i mentioned in my first presentation models are based on assumptions so that assumptions should be fulfilled if there is limitation or there are limitations in your experiment that probably not fit for your calibrating the crop model or your model so guidelines for model calibrations we are continuing with that first one is calibrate phenological development mainly by changing the model parameters that determines temperature some requirement for development that's the growing degree days starting from emergence to any stages if i consider soybean legume crop as i mentioned in my second presentation that it has passed through different vegetative stages from v1 v2 v3 v4 then coming back to uh, reproductive stage where r1 r2 r3 and then r7 is the physiological maturity that in that case actually we determine each and individual growth stages and the time as well as the heat you need or growing degree days required some of growing degree days required to uh, that event to happen that may that stage to come so that's why you look at temperature some requirement for development the gdd and verify yield simulations and cumulative light interception leaf area index and total biomass production so this is what actually we do in calibrations so coming back to this if simulations are within 15% plus or minus of the experimental calibration yield data values or within 15% of yield potential water related issues predicted from boundary function related to yield with water availability then stop for the calibration that means where you are matching between the observed and predicted values with the plus or minus 15% and with these conditions as i mentioned in a and b then probably you have to start further calibrating the model that means the model is ready and it is well calibrated but it may not happen always when you do all those things in that case if suppose these conditions are not fulfilled if condition ones are not met then leaf area related model parameters will be amended with possible ranges of plus or minus 20% so leaf area index will be the next target then if the second one is not fulfilled then probably the yield level levels are still deviates more than 15 plus or minus 15 percent the hardness index can be modified within plus or minus 10 percent for mean values reported so i have not given table one but it can be through changing the temperature some requirements of development before and after flowering or assimilate worsening coefficients next is the respiration and photosynthesis parameters should be changed only as a last resort that means if 1 2 or 3 are not fulfill the conditions then respiration and photosynthesis parameters this should be the last resort most of the models actually if it is well calibrated your experiment is good then probably it will be fulfilled in the first two stages 
three in rare cases and fourth the rarest of the rare case however after three yield level is deviates more than 15 percent these parameters can be changed with possible changes or ranges that are no more than plus or minus 10 percent of the published range of these parameters so you have to go for the published data and see and how much changes required and it should be within plus or minus 10 percent so kindly go through this slide it's very important that how to calibrate your model and this four uh, methods will help you in calibrating the model before it is ready for validation. So this is for information of harvesting measures, cereal counter optimal growing conditions, cereal pulses, rice, wheat, coarse cereal pulses, oil seed, sugar cane, and you can see, and you can find literature these values will be required for you. So desired, desirable attributes of crop simulation models. What are those desired attributes? Because most of the models, whatever you are going to use for your future research work or future study or future uh, decision making processes regarding your natural resource management, climate change impact analysis, probably you need to know the desired attributes of those models. And this is a presentation prepared for that. As you know, most of the, all the models, actually, most of the models, you can say they work on daily time basis. So what the simulate simulate daily growth and development based on weather, soil, and physiological attributes. Next attribute is the flexibility to simulate management practices. As you know, more in a crop, there are different types of management. It may be nitrogen management practices. That nitrogen management can be from organic and organic sources. So if you are applying nitrogen, then all the management practices such as agronomic management practices, sowing dates, plant density, cultivar maturity whether it is short duration, medium or long duration, and nitrogen application rates, and types of nitrogen, uh, sources of nitrogen, whether it is from urea, or it is from potassium nitrate, it is from organic sources, then irrigation methods. So there is flexibility to simulate manual practice available in the model. Then simulation of fundamental physiological processes, and simulation of key physiological processes such as crop development, net carbon, Assimilation, biomass partitioning, leaf area, crop, water relations, and grain growth, it, they are also available. Then crop specificity should reflect crop specific physiological attributes for respiration and photosynthesis. If it, the physiologists are maybe crop scientists, they may require this and critical stages and growth periods that define vegetative and grain filling period and canopy architecture. A minimum requirement of crop genetic coefficients, maximum requirement, or uh, sorry, minimum requirement for crop site genetic coefficients such as maximum leaf area index, data showing they are also available. Then validation against data from field crops, approach yield potential, integrated uh, rain fed yield potential. So comparison of model outcomes, that's grain yield above ground dry matter production means total dry matter production, TDM, crop above, above for transpiration against actual major data from field crops that receive management practices conducive to irrigated and drain field potential. And models are user friendly, definitely that's why we are using different kinds of models and models embedded uh, in user friendly interface where required data inputs and outputs can easily visualized as the flexibility to modify different values. Full documentation of model parameterization and availability Publicly available models, published peer review literature with full documentation with reference data sources from internal parameter values. So uh, this, this, you know, most of the models are publicly available, available, and you don't have to. You just have to register them and get all those information. Even you'll get documents related to model development as well as documents related to how to calibrate, validate, and some hands-on training practice manual also available on the net. So you can go through them and if a particular model you are interested, you can visit those websites. I mentioned a few models in my first presentation, in my first or second presentation, then probably you can go and see and uh, download those manuals and do by yourself when you are ready to use the model. So next is about uh, harvest and physiological magic dates uh, because that's very important as I mentioned in the calibration procedure when you don't have uh, the condition one is fulfilled then probably in the condition two where you with limited uh, 
data or all those things when you are calibrating a model in that case probably you have to adjust the model to your physiological maturity dates so as you know physiological maturity dates varies uh, and uh, it's a difference between harvesting maturity and physiological maturity in case of mechanical harvesting harvesting takes place when grain moisture content reaches a certain level and drying costs are minimized that's it may take two to four weeks to re uh, that uh, that uh, of the physiological maturity and the crops are harvested that means that cannot be considered as um, physiological maturity because in these cases using harvest date as a proxy for physiological maturity can lead to a large bias in the simulated yield hence physiological maturity needs to be derived or retrieved from cultivar total gdd gdd is the growing degree days as i mentioned earlier and the calculation you may find from the net are it is base minus average temperature of every day and summation of those values from emergence to physiological maturity will give you total uh, GDD required for the plan from emergence to physiological maturity. So in this information, if this information is not available, expertise opinion or published data can be used to estimate the GDD from physiological maturity to harvest date. But in contrast to the large scale farms or mechanical harvesting, a small scale non mechanized farming in the developing countries like India or other countries, harvest occurred around physiological maturity days because of pressure to use the crop residue for livestock feeding or risk of insect disease, birds, rodents, etc., and multiple crops per year. So the cropping intensity is high in that case, it has to be harvested as soon as possible. So before going further, then some terminologies, you know, that is important uh, for this type of calibration you need to know. One is the phenology. Phenology is the study of periodic life cycle events, how these are influenced by seasonal and internal annual variation in climate, as well as habitat factors such as elevation. And genetic coefficients, which will be very much important when you're going for calibrating the model, yeah, the mathematical constructs designed to mimic the phenotypic outcome of genes under different environments to influence life cycle, including fractional allocation of different phases, photosynthetic, vegetative, rooting, and reproductive processes. So these two terminologies I thought it would be helpful to you to understand why it determined the genetic coefficient because we are going for different stages of development in plant growth. We are simulating those stages of development. That's why you need genetic coefficients and we are matching our object value with the predicted one so coming so i hope you have some knowledge about model calibrations then when model is well calibrated then it's ready for validation so what is validation validation or testing of the model in parts or as a whole because um, uh, the crop simulation models are huge and they have so many models so the models on which you are working, that means you are testing that part only. Suppose I'm interested in crop field and effect of nitrogen management practices on crop growth and development. Probably in that case, I'm probably testing the model as a part. I using independent experiments on the system level. So in agriculture systems, so what are those for crops and cropping system? Usually prefer multi-locational and multi-year experiments and long-term fertilizer trials are very much suited for this type of studies and uh, they are collected from research farms so um, for calibration and validation so validation as i mentioned earlier is a first test of testing the models and uh, calibration sorry and validation is the second phase of testing and when the model is well tested and calibrated and validated they're ready for scenarios analysis but before going back to going to the scenarios analysis, we'll again go through what should be the type of calibration experiments and what are those minimum data sets required for calibration and validations, which you will find in our next presentation. So thank you very much for your kind patience and we'll get back to you so soon and we'll have more presentation regarding this. So thank you for your presence. Have a good day.